on, everybody? What's going on? Hey, welcome to the God Perspective by way of Let Me Talk. For those of you who are on Facebook, um, you know, it shows up as Let Me Talk Radio, which it is. But uh, it's also uh, the God Perspective. Um, this is a, a, a new it's not a new channel because it's on our Rising Ground Church channel on uh, YouTube. But nonetheless, it's um, it's a new thing that that um, uh, we're, we're adding to the channel. It's just, you know, like let me talk. It's it's um, kind of little candid moments. You, if you know me, I just I'm just a conversationist. I'm a pastor, but I but my uh, thing is kind of it sounds like conversation. I'm not a I don't preach to you like that. And um I can teach you, but I don't. Well, however God moves me in these particular platforms, it's usually done by kind of a conversation. So I want to have a conversation. I, you know, let's let, let's just talk about some things. Um, what's on a, a brother's heart, you know? So I think I mentioned this the other day. You know, we have everybody is uh, everybody's going through things everybody's going through things it's so funny how one moment literally one day you could be on top of the world and i'm talking about an eight hours later <laughs> in, the, in the same day you could find yourself back in the valley that's so crazy um it's amazing how that happens it's really it really truly is it just it shows us how you know how fickle our perspectives really are or, or how they can be, you know. So this is really about. It's, it's really about suffering, but it's your perspective on it. So I'm, a, I'm a probably going to bounce around like I always do. Um, how it you know, how it comes out is how it comes out. Y'all just forgive me. Pray for me. <laughs> but, you know, kind of stick with me. And I just pray that God opens up our understandings in the way that they can be opened up from or through this particular program so suffering man suffering what is it you know what i mean suffering what do we do in our suffering what do we do in our suffering but suffer you know the bible says there is a time and a season for everything what do we do in our suffering but suffer? There's something real strong in that because um, when we're in the valley, when we're in a moment of suffering, when it feels so hard, we try our best to climb out of that chasm, man. We try our best to get out of that cave. Um, sometimes we lose our footing as we're trying to climb out and we slip back down, you know, because we think it's our responsibility in one way to get out of this seeming dilemma we're suffering we we must have done something wrong um we have to find out what god wants us to do to get out of this thing so we just try our best we force our way out of this hole when ultimately we we either find ourselves back in there maybe you you, you think you, you've climbed out and you got a momentary breath but then again, you're, you're right back in there because the game of suffering is just to suffer. It's a time for it. It's a season for it. But it's not it's not what we think. And I love that, you know, uh, the Bible alludes to, you know, it's uh, you know, it talks about is it's your perspective is it's you, let it be unto you according to how you believe. If you believe you're suffering, if you see suffering then you're going to feel suffering. Then you're going to get suffering. Now, this is all, I'm not trying to sway you, you know, on how that thing feels because I can't stand it. You know what I mean? I can't, you know, you, you're in a situation, you're in a predicament and you really don't know um, how to get out of it. You don't know what to do. You can't see your way out of anything, you know, and you just, you just start panicking and you start um, producing all of those emotions and those thoughts around the suffering. And we know the enemy comes in there and, you know, tries to, to make things be different than, than what they really are. Yeah, the pain is the pain, but nonetheless, it doesn't have to be exactly how it feels. You know, um, really, you know, your suffering is a, is a cocoon 
transforming you into the next level of life or of the life, transforming you into the next level of the life God meant for you to come into. Sometimes I can use so many words. I can use too many words. It's unnecessary. But anyway, it's a cocoon, man. It's a cocoon. And it's meant to, again, transform you, transfigure you into whatever God is making out of you to to, to produce this next thing um, for your next level. You know what I mean? It's, it's funny how we do go through these moments and um, they if you go through them the way that you can go through them, the, the way that God would intend for you to go through them, then you've you've turned yourself into something that you wasn't prior to that suffering or that pain or that cocoon. I mean, I'm sure we, we go through a lot of cocoons, you know what I mean? Because the same like we always got some kind of pain, some kind of suffering. But that's just what it is. And I think, you know, the, the big reason why we have a lot of we go through this thing is because God is always creating because to be in this form is to be in constant longing for freedom. We create because it's in essence a reflection of our true nature and our true destiny, which is unhinged from our limitations as molded spirits, these spirits encased in these bodies. You know, it says we are we're spirits with a soul in the body. So we go through the you know, we we go through these things, these times and these seasons because we're trekking through this life, man, um, because you know, a spirit is, uh, you know, it's a spirit. It's, it's, it's invisible or it's, you know, it's, it's not material. So life as a spirit is probably vastly different from life as a body or in a, or, or actually in the body. So how do we, or how does God maneuver all, all of that? When, when we're in this conditioned atmosphere, this conditioned environment, which is the body, the body is conditioned. How does God plan this life for us? You know what I mean? How, how, you know, God is God. So who, who can actually know all of that? But at, not, but at the same time, you gotta, you gotta think about, man, how is this thing done? How is it really done? It's crazy. Faith is, you know, it's, it's the, it, faith is the biggest thing, man. You know, we talk about faith being the evidence of things unseen. And sometimes you, you kind of make that out to be, which it is, it's the evidence of things unseen. So, but I want to say faith is the evidence when there's, when there's nothing else to see. All that's left is faith. The only thing there to hold on to is faith. So faith is our evidence. It's our evidence. And I hope I'm making sense because it's almost like a trick on words in in, in my mind. But faith is your evidence. Faith is is the thing you hold on to when you don't have when you can't sense that it it is the thing that's materializing. You're waiting on this thing and you having faith that it's going to show when you don't even have that. What you have left is just the belief that faith itself is the thing I have to hold on to because it's all I can see in this moment. That, and that's so critical to, you know, to really grasp, man, and understand, because, again, we're in so many things right now. Again, we, we're getting pulled in so many different directions and, you know, belief at times becomes a struggle. I do say this for some, the longer you're in the thing, the longer you're in that valley, the longer you keep going through or going that going around that revolving door. I have prayed about this thing. It comes back. I thought I had a breakthrough. I only to uh, uh, realize I got another step. And it seems like those other steps just come right when you think you're on the the, the threshold to total victory. They, They come back. But the more it seems when you when, when, when you're in that thing for some of us and I, I like to say for a lot of us, I hope. But it's funny how because the more you in it, you decide to stay with God 
even when you can't see anything. And I think that's the evidence of a true, a true believer. And I'm not judging the opposite. I am saying for those people who have who have said that they believe and but uh, or they believe they tried God and they tried this. And it's like, you know, this ain't real or this, this, this and that. I'm, I might I might have to tell you, you probably you probably wasn't connected as much as you thought you were, because for some reason, when you are connected to God, when you truly believe the more you go through, the more it seems like nothing's changing. There's something that's happened within you that has made you unapologetically hold on to God, even when God don't look like he's around. That's 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 where you want to be. And I'm going to tell you, it's tough because you do feel like nothing's happening and you feel like a fool at times. But there's something that's happened to you inside that's changed your perspective about leaving God. Man, I remember having conversations with myself. I said, I'm out, man. I, I, I can't do this no more because this is ridiculous. I feel like a fool. I feel like everybody around me is prospering. You know, the body says that, that money answereth all things. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not going to um, expound on that because just surfacely, that's that's it exactly what, what, what it looks like. Money answereth all things. You know what I mean? It's like, man, so God, what's going on? I mean, we're we're in these points where I could have I could have done this and been a lot more secure financially than going the direction that I felt that you were calling me and our family to go. What's going on? But then you always have that thing, whereas you have people who are extremely wealthy that jump that jump off bridges because they don't have a, a God perspective. They have money. So evidently money don't answer answer all things. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's key for us to just take a step back, judge suffering for what it is, which is just suffering. It's just a moment that's there. It's a time and it's a season for a thing. It's a cocoon to propel you into the next point if, you know, you do it God's way. Keep your eyes on the coming glory, whatever that may be in your suffering, in your valley. When you're going through, there is a there is an end point. And at that end point, as you step across the threshold of that victory. And you witness that glory that you've waited on in, in, in that moment, that's that's where you keep your focus. You may be 10 feet away from that stepping over point. But just keep your eyes because sometimes that 10 feet can can feel like 10 miles. But you keep your eyes on the prize, as, as they say, and. Allow God, man, to. Change your idea and your perspective of what you're going through in the moment, because it's there for your glory and his glory. You know, we have to continue to remember again that the the life that we live through this body in this form is is it's it's a uh, it's a reason man it's a reason and I don't want to like reason like practical human reasoning but literally we're creators we we create with god we move we we have to be in constant movement some being in being in this form, it stops us. It stops us from seeing that truth. And God has to shake us. He has to shake us up so we can get back on the course of forward momentum, forward motion, progress in God so we can become whatever it is that God's making. And to tell you the truth, yeah, we can say where we're being conformed in the image of Christ. Um, what's but what else is the what else is the destination, you know? And, and I don't think we'll actually know that because there's so much we just can't understand about God. But, you know, he's there. You can feel it. You can you can experience it and you have experienced it if you have. So that's all I got, y'all. Pastor Jamal, this is the God perspective by way of let me talk radio for the Facebook folks. Um, love y'all, man. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep going. Look at the sun. Let it fall on you, man. And while you're 
10 feet away, 10 steps away. Just act like you're literally 10 inches out. Well, actually, you're, you're 10 inches in. Let's, let's just say that. We're, we're in. So hope it makes sense, folks. I'll talk to you. Peace.